An unexpected guest visits UNC over the weekend, just a week before Election Day. UNC's campus got spooky this Halloween in more ways than one. We've seen unseasonably warm temperatures this week for us here in Greeley, but what's coming ahead? Stay tuned to find out. Rockies are looking for a new manager. Full highlights later on in sports. This is Bear News. Don't go anywhere. right around the corner, both the Democratic and Republican parties travel the country trying to gain last-minute voters. Sunday, UNC rented Butler Hancock for a rally for Republican candidate Donald J. Trump. Thanks to CBS4 Denver, we can show you the inside of this event. Trump took the stage at 4 p.m., which was an unusual time for Denver sports fans. He even made a joke about holding his rally in the middle of the Broncos game and still having people in attendance. Trump touched on is issues such as the oil and gas industry, which hit close to home for many Coloradoans. He talked about his plan for the nation's health care system, if he wins, and other issues that have Americans buzzing lately. The goal behind Trump's visit to Greeley was to get people out to vote to win Colorado. November 8th is the big day. If you haven't already turned in your, ba your mail-in ballot, make sure you wait, make your way to a polling center and cast your vote. Elections always bring out hordes of people trying to get their message heard. Bear News reporter Jackie Pelosi spoke to a Nashville couple in Greeley to push their campaign, Lift the Vote. With elections less than two weeks away, candidates are on the road trying to gain voters. Donald Trump is trying to influence the Greeley community. Trump was not the only one trying to influence Northern Colorado. Lift the Vote set up camp in front of the entrance line to touch as many people as possible. There's a movement. There is a movement across the country and people are turning out more than they ever have in our lifetime and we're double your age. So. They don't only attend political rallies. Just this week our buses have been at the Ohio State University football game, at the Georgia-Florida game down in Jacksonville with 150,000 people, at the Cincinnati or at the Cleveland Indians-Chicago Cubs game in Cleveland. Uh, they've been at Trump rallies, they've been at big churches, and they were at a pumpkin festival in Ohio that draws 400,000 people over four days to a town of 13,000 people. Lift the Vote has three teams across the country that travel to different events to spread the word about Christians voting. There's many Christians that didn't vote in the last two elections, each one, 40 million, as there are residents of California. Even though they target a Christian audience, they want people to realize that the only way for change to happen is to have their voice be heard. Yeah, the point is that if we stay home, we silence our own voices. Reporting at the University of Northern Colorado, I'm Jackie Pulizzi, Bear News. This is one of the many messages on display at, the at Sunday's Trump rally. It's too late to mail in your ballot, but not too late to vote. Make sure you make it to the voting centers on November 8th. November is an exciting time for many students across campus. Winter break is almost here. They're making plans. A little change in the weather and registration has students blowing off homework, blowing off homework to find that perfect class that fits their schedule. All of us at Bear News want to remind you that it is time to see your advisor to get those important PIN numbers so you can register on the appropriate dates in November. Some helpful tips to chew on? Actively check URSA for classes because a lot of them fill fast. Mark your calendar for your, your registration date so you can take that fun pottery class that everyone wants to get into. And finally, have all of your ducks in a row so you can get into all the classes you want as soon as registration starts. For all of you seniors out there, take it in and enjoy your last undergraduate registration. It's the first week of November, but we're still seeing summer-like weather. How's the forecast looking, John? Hello and welcome to Bear News. I'm your meteorologist, John Polydor. 
Taking a look at our current conditions right now, we're seeing 65 degrees with a real light wind about six mile an hour coming out of the east. For tonight, we'll see those skies clear up, those winds calm down a little bit, and we'll see the nighttime low just drop above freezing at about 34 degrees. Taking a look at Loveland Ski Area, here's a picture where they saw three inches of fresh snow this past week. And while they're not as open as the other resorts like A Basin, they're going to be opening up next week. But here is the local mountain dog for Loveland, enjoying that snow, sticking his face in it. I'll have your full forecast for you in just a moment. Spending time with ghosts and goblins and maybe even a princess or two? Yep, but not to worry, it's all in fun. The UC parking lot was the place to be this Halloween as it hosted Trunk or Treat, a safe alternative to trick-or-treating. The annual event gave kids the opportunity to get candy and play games while dressing up in their best costumes. Many campus organizations parked their cars and handed out candy from the trunk of their vehicles. Some of the students also wore costumes while they interacted with the trick-or-treaters. The event only lasted a couple of hours, but the kids definitely got their fill of sugar for the night. One UNC residence hall puts on a spooky treat for Halloween and for a good cause. Reporter Stephen Rice gives us an inside scoop on Haunted Harrison. Hi, I'm Bird News reporter Stephen Rice, about to give you an inside look at Haunted Harrison here at Harrison Hall on the UNC campus. Go to the Harrison Museum. This museum was created a couple years ago after we found the remains the Harrison Colony. But before you're allowed to enter the haunted hallway, you must pay a dollar or a perishable food item that would go to Bear Pantry and help with the fight against hunger. This cause will quickly turn to terror as you're about to see. But if you didn't get the chance to pee your pants like I did, senior resident assistant Ian Hurt recommends one thing. If you haven't checked it out this year, you definitely should next year. It's always a good time and a uh, fun thing to do around Halloween. Harrison Hall, I'm Stephen Rice, Bear News 98. Haunted Harrison looks like a fun time. Thanks, Stephen. Coming up after the break, John has your full forecast. We'll be right back. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get Come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Clean kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back. Taking a look at our surface fronts right now, we have high pressure dominating most of the country right now with our old low pressure system pushing on into the Atlantic right now. Taking a look locally, we have mostly rain and snow, mixed precipitation, for the mountains right now and down into the Rockies into New Mexico. Taking a look at our current temperatures around the region, we have 67 for Greeley, 66 for Pueblo, which is above our averages for this year. But taking a look up on the north, 57 for Cheyenne, 50 for Jackson, which is right around their seasonal averages. But Topeka and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City sitting at 73 degrees, which is quite warm for this time of year for them. But in the next week, we'll see those high temperatures start to take a little dip and go more seasonal averages when we see our next system come through. Taking a look at today's records, we, our record for today, uh, 73 degrees, was set just a few years ago in 2009 
but we're, we're sitting right at about our seasonal average for our low with 32 degrees is what we're going to see and 25 is what our average is usually sitting at. Our highs are a little bit farther off though. We have a high of 68 today, which is much warmer than we should be seeing for this time of year. Our sunset and sunrise are starting to see the discrepancy and move farther away from each other, which is a good time to remind you that daylight savings is coming November 6th. Don't forget to make those clocks fall back. And as meteorologists, this is especially important for us because this is where we switch from mountain daylight timing to mountain standard timing, which actually adds a whole nother hour to all of our forecasts. So we could be one hour off on all of our forecasts if we don't know what time of year it is. Taking a look at our five day forecast, we have clear conditions for the whole weekend ahead with warm, warm conditions as well. 69 on Friday, 67 Saturday, and 68 on Sunday. But looking on the next week, we have a few chances of rain later in the next week, but we'll see those low temperatures slowly start to dip in the next week and feel more like winter is coming. On to Steven now for sports. The UNC football team won a thriller in Oregon over the weekend. Full highlights after the break. Kids will spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes? a day. They have the time. With soccer season coming to an end, the Bears hope that they can bring home another Big Sky title. But the season end also means that the team says goodbye to the seniors. Rory Jacket Polizzi has the inside scoop on Senior Night. There's something special about Friday nights at Jackson Stadium. Last Friday, the magic in the air brought high spirits for Senior Night. Prior to the start of the game, all the seniors and their parents shared one last moment together as a Bear family. The magic was present throughout the game and the Bears used that to their advantage. Marielle Gutierrez said the Bears stepped up when they had to. First off, I think it was winning balls um, up in the air and just trying to um, get, get to the balls first and, you know, keeping the ball, kicking it around. Um, and I think that talking to was, was a major key. 20 minutes into the first half, Gutierrez found the back of the net after Maddie Roberts sent a beautiful cross Gutierrez way. On the defensive side of the ball, North Dakota could not get a break because Alyssa McGuire had a solid showing in goal, having her second career shutout. Paige Moore secured the win for the Bears when she finished Brooke Braden's corner kick well into the second half. The Bears' big 2-0 win over North Dakota secured them a spot in the Big Sky Tournament. I think, you know, obviously it means you keep, get to keep playing. I think that's the most important part. Um, you know, I think it's been, overall it's been a good year, you know, a 10-win season so far. UNC hopes to bring home the Big Sky Trophy for the second time in two years. When the, when the pressure was really on, I think the players stepped up. You know, a little disappointing to be down the table a little bit, but, you know, we like our chances going into the tournament. Reporting from the University of Northern Colorado, I'm Jackie Pulizzi, Bear News. Unfortunately, the Lumberjacks knocked the Bears out of the tournament. Congratulations on a great season, ladies. Thank you, Jackie. The Bears have a winning season going. I repeat, the Bears have a winning season going. UNC's football team continues to prove themselves on the field every Saturday. Lead when senior kicker Jamie Falloon put a 40-yard field goal through the uprights. The Vikings answered with a, a touchdown by Alex Caressa, and PSU took control of the first half. Ouch, it didn't look pretty for the Bears going to halftime, 21-10 Vikings. Whatever Coach Ernest Collins said in the locker room at the half, it worked. The Bears came out at the second half with fire in their eyes. About five minutes into the third quarter, Kyle Sloter threw a 14-yard pass to Akeem Dex to tie the game 28-all. Let's just say the fourth quarter was a back-and-forth race. At the end of regulation time, it's 49-49 and we're going to overtime. UNC takes on the University of North Dakota on Saturday at Nottingham Field. We'll have full highlights for you next week. The UNC women's volleyball team spent Halloween weekend in Montana picking up two wins. First up was a matchup in Bozeman against Montana State. The Bears and Bobcats played four close sets, but UNC prevailed 3-1. Courtney Lockie and Team Marie Neymar both had 15 kills and route to the win. 
UNC hit the road for a short trip to Missoula to face Montana the next day. The Bears' consistent play scared the Grizzlies on both ends, ending a 3-0 win. Ashley Guthrie led the charge with 37 assists. The two wins gave the Bears a season sweep of the Montana squads. UNC is back in action Thursday night when they host Idaho at 7 p.m. The Colorado Rockies are looking for a new manager after another disastrous season. Walt Weiss parted ways with the organization after four losing years at the helm. General Manager Jeff Bridge cited an unhealthy relationship with the former coach, leading to his departure. The Rockies are now on the managerial hunt, which includes some big-name coaches. San Francisco Giants pitching coach Dave Rigetti and bench coach Ron Wotis are notable candidates. If the Rockies don't go outside the organization, current AAA manager Glenn Allen Hill is also a possibility. Whoever takes over as a new coach has a lot of work to do as the Rockies need to get back into the postseason. Coming up after the break, we have a movie review you won't want to miss. Stay tuned. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The Magnificent Seven Ride Again. Antoine Fuqua's remake dazzles the big screen. Denzel Washington leads a cast of heavyweights in this American Western thriller. Set in 1879, a wolfish industrialist, Bartholomew Bog, played by Peter Sarsgaard, grasps control of the Old West town of Rose Creek. Desperate for a savior, native residents seek help from local bounty hunter Sam Chilzom, played by Denzel Washington. Chilzum recruits six deadly outlaws in order to end both terror. Fuqua's flick in a recreation of the 1960 Western classic of the same name, directed by John Sturge. The 60s Western was based on Akira Kurosawa's 1954 Japanese tour of the Force, Seven Samurai, which is regarded as one of the most influential and brief worked films of all time. Denzel once again proves to be a prevailing force that cannot be stopped. He delivers a commanding performance that draws the viewer in from the beginning to end. Fuqua steers away from the gory Tarantino feel by rever reverting back to the classic style of Western gunslinger film. Chris Pratt makes the film feel fun with his quirky attitude and the lovable personal personality he seems to ensure. Ethan Hack also stars alongside Denzel Washington and it's no surprise that they mesh together like veteran sports teams. The two start alongside each other in the critically acclaimed film, Training Day, which is also directed by Fart Fuqua. Fuqua creates a picture-perfect feel to his film that is beautifully shot with a polished script that will not disappoint. The movie has a runtime of 2 hours and 13 minutes and is a fun ride all the way till the end. And that's our show for tonight. Thanks for joining us this evening. We'll be back next week. Until then, stay up to date on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Bear News 98 Be sure to like us. And from all of us at Bear News, have a great weekend.